Hey guys, welcome back to Front Seat Driver. My name is Jason. I am here with the infamous Corvette Rob from Corvette World. Infamous. Infamous. Indeed. Very, very infamous. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about today, Rob? Well, we got your uh, other yellow beauty here. Yep. We did a uh, walk around presentation about, what, a month and a half ago yep. on the his C8, essentially like a full blown new delivery mm -hmm. uh, intro to uh, the workings of the C8. Uh, pretty much for a new buyer. We did this, of course, with the benefit of you, the viewers, especially uh, if you uh, didn't get that same treatment from uh, your dealership or you bought it used and you know they, you didn't get that at all. So we're going to do a very similar thing here with your 2017 Z06, which you actually did buy from me. I did. It was sitting and, right there. And did go through some of that yep. because obviously, we, but you came out of a 17 Grand yep. Sports. So you already kind of had a gist of it. It was just covering down on some of the other yeah. stuff that, as you found out, your, your dealer didn't teach you when they he bought not. your Grand Sport. They just so. gave me the keys. Have at it. it. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> yeah, we don't do that here. Yeah. So um, this is going to be for a learning benefit. Now, obviously, unlike the C8, the C7s have been around out for a decade now, and I'm sure I've done this video before, um, so but that's okay. We're going to focus on it. We're going to go through it step by step, and uh, who knows? Maybe you'll learn something again. Hey, I might. I learn <laughs> stuff every day. So. I'm going to go through this. We're just going to start out with some basics and make it happen. I'm not going to do this in any very special order. It's just going to be kind of going in a circular format. So let's start off with uh, the fobs. The fobs themselves, there's only mild differences between the manual and the automatic. This here is, of course, for a manual. If this were an automatic, you would have another row with a remote start button. You hit lock and then hold the uh, circle-shaped button to do the remote start. Obviously, manuals, you don't get a remote start. People do notice that there is a button here and a polished aluminum bottom here. You push on it and that releases your emergency entry key, which I will explain how to work here in a moment. But let's start with the front here. Unlike the C8, we don't have a frunk. We have a regular engine bay with a trunk or in a trunk in the rear. So let's start out with how do you pop the hood? Okay, so the C6s used to have them here. There's nothing here now. It's now underneath, just like the C4. So if you're going from the heads-up display and you follow your hand straight across, you'll run into it right here. And you pull it towards you, and that opens it up. Now, for those of you that don't want fingerprints all over your car, I'm going to do this in a way to try to minimize these fingerprints. Go up from underneath towards the middle and open that way. Obviously, we got our engine bay here. In this case, it's a Z06 LT4 6.2 liter with a 1.7 liter Eaton supercharger. And uh, you got your general layout. Um, my friend Jason here has a very nice Haltech cold air intake, but generally speaking, uh, the GM ones look have a very similar shape, but it looks slightly different than this. But other than that, it is stock. If you see a DOT4 reservoir right here, do you know it is a manual transmission? from the brake fluid. And then if you see a uh, dry sump system there, then you know you've got a dry sump setup. The only wet, the only wet sumps in the C7 were the base stingrays, non-Z51. You'd have an oil cap and an oil dipstick on this side. If you see a cord here going towards what is the shock absorber, then you know you have a magnetic ride car, which in this case, all Z06s are magnetic rides. All right, now closing. I've covered this in, in the past, but for those of you who don't know, I, it used to be a real stickler with me when I go to car shows and I would see people grabbing them and slinging them down from one side and nine out of 10 times the other side would net, wouldn't close. And the reason why is because it torques, it flexes, and doesn't hit evenly unless you do it stupid hard, which is not good for the car. These are carbon fiber. As you can see, it's not falling closed like the old C6s, C5s used to. So. Another thing too is when you close them, people want to minimize their fingerprints. So I'm going to show you the way I was taught. So put your finger here, get it to about a foot, go to the middle, watch my thumb. See that? Thumb action. Very nice. Now you've only got one thumbprint to wipe with a microfiber towel and it's evenly closed. All right, moving to the side here. If you're going to park it and you're in tight spaces, this generation does not have power folding mirrors, but they are manual folding and they, it does not hurt them to fold them either direction. Now that's not my, see, you said I would learn something right there. Did not know that. You did not know that. Okay. Not. Well, now you know. And of course, 
this helps for, God forbid, you make a mistake and you hit something. True. You know, it's better it gives away rather than break. Yeah. As far as the exterior goes, I mean, I don't need to really go into that. I just play in here. But I will note that with the gas cap, unlike earlier generations where you had to hit a button to release the gas cap primarily in the C5 and the C6, the C7, you do not. It is just a push, click, and open. Again, this is why... If you're a C7 person, you get them ceramic coated or you're just really strict and you don't want fingerprints on your car, bring a microfiber towel with you, nice clean ones. Keep a couple. That way, whenever you do stuff like this, you got them handy. Um, they push, click, close. Now, there is a tumbler in here, so when the car is locked, it will not open. So see what happens when I unlock it? Tumbler releases, opens it up. Um, C7 is the uh, first generation of Corvette to have a uh, double baffle fuel system, so there's no gas cap. you got essentially a valve on the outside, a valve further in, so a gas pump has to be fully inserted. The problem is with uh, some of these California rated gas pumps, and I call them that because they're eco-friendly, um, the, the angle of attack of where the fluid flows from the gas is so sharp, sometimes you get back pressure and it, it trips it early. So if you want to avoid this headache, it's, it looks silly, but I promise you, take your gas nozzle, flip it upside down, and I hold it. I will be doing that on a regular basis because I have this problem almost every time. It drives everybody gas. nuts. Yes. Yeah, and then you get in there, you do it, and you're like, you realize you're only at a third of a, a quarter tank or a half tank. You're like, what happened? Because right. you think it clicked early. So yeah, turn it upside down and put it on the first notch. Don't do two notches. One notch and let it fill. Nice. Now when it clicks and it's done, don't top it off because it will spray out on you. And then you got a mess to clean up on your paint. All right, coming to the back. Okay, as I mentioned about the key fob, these vets uh, like the sixth generation before them. And of course the C8s after are fully, you know, you got buttons, electronic buttons right here. That you can push on to open up your rear trunk. You also got buttons on the inside and you've got buttons on the fob. Now, what if your battery's dead or the fob battery dies? So this is where that key comes in play. It's the only key in this car. Same with like the C6, only whereas the C6 was right in the middle, you go to the middle, you're gonna see a camera. The holes they put over here on the far right-hand side. And of course, you take this laser cut key here, make sure you identify the hole. See how I do that? I guide it in so I don't risk scratching the paint under here. You get it in. It's a little awkward because it's a square rectangular kind of key, but you get it in, twist to the right, and that opens it up. Now, in that scenario, if you open it up and the alarm immediately starts going off, you know your battery in your car is most likely totally fine. It's most likely a fob battery. So, in that scenario, there's a process to where you would go, you grab this little pull cable here, like the C6, it does have a pull cable. You pull it, that opens up your door. That gets you inside. So from this side, you take this fob with the cross flags down and the aluminum side out, shove it in that slot. Like in the old days where you turn the key, like my C4. You hit the brake, push the start button. When that happens, there'll be a three second delay. Obviously in the case of a manual, you'll have to hit the clutch too you get a three second delay and then it'll turn over and that'll get it started and get you keep get you going until you get the battery in here replaced now let's go back to the back if it's a scenario where you open it up and there's no lights on there's no noise there's no nothing you got a dead vehicle battery what's your step so procedure is watch your belt and your paint move your stuff out of the way you jam your hand right here on this carpet pull this up you don't have to pull it rough just nice and gentle just work it up and see you got this foam cover here gently pull this out see it's shaped and there's your battery so obviously you can do a jump on here or if you got a one of those battery tenders that click onto the electrodes here you can do it that way or of course if the car is dead and you got close enough you can use the gm tender and plug it into your power port here Either way, that's your access to your battery. When you're done, you see that it's shaped just like this. You put this right here and put it until it's flat and then put the carpet back down. Now, if people are asking there, this is, for those that ordered the tow hook option, this is a place you can stow it. Very nice. 
This is an option. Some cars had them, some didn't. But again, if you wanted to have it, you can go ahead, stow it right in there, and just put the carver, carpet over it. So do you want to show where those actually go on the car? Yes, I will do that next. Might as well cover it while we're on it. But get back to the carpet. Make sure, pull up your netting. Make sure this goes all the way down across. Because you don't want your get deformations and eventually tears on your carpet if you leave it up. Yes. Also, always return that styrofoam piece back in. That plastic piece over the battery needs to be in place and styrofoam on top of it flat. I can't tell you how many times we had cars in where they weren't put back the right way. And it leaves lumps in the, the trunks. And uh, over time, if this thing isn't put back right, it can cause tears in the carpet. So, so that covers a, your power outage uh, scenario. All right. While we're on the tow hook, of course, tow hooks are used in racing primarily. You get in a ditch. These are connected essentially to frame points where you can be gently towed out without putting too much stress on parts of the car that can be damaged by hooking it up uh, in the wrong way. So now, there is one here in the back. This piece pops out and there's a hole in here where it just screws in. I'm not gonna take that out because that's a bit of a pain. I'm gonna go, but I'm gonna go to the front and show you where the front one is. Now, Z06s in Grand Sports have large grills, so there's no pieces to remove. Stingrays actually have a piece that will come out. If you look right here, this piece is detachable, and you can pop this out to get at that hole. But for the Z06 and the Grand Sport, you don't have to do that. You just go right in with it. So the hole's right here for the tow hook. Gently go in there, careful not to scratch anything. You line it up with your hole and thread it in. And then you just crank away until it's in. And then now you got your tow hook installed. There are fancier looking aftermarket ones with colors and stainless steel and whatnot. This is your generic factory one. How to remove the target top on a C7. Okay, just like the C5 and C6 before it, you have three points of contact. In fact, one of the few parts that actually carried over from the previous generation is this back lock here. Um, it doesn't matter the order, but this is what you do. You fully open it, and you push on this button here. Now... Again, I've said this many times in the past in other videos I've done. I'm going to do it again. Don't do this. Because over time, and I've seen it happen, this part here is casted. It's not forged. Over time, you can wear it down, and it actually starts crumbling apart. I've actually had that happen, and we had to replace this piece. So when you do it, catch it gently. gently. All right, so it's open. Next step is, of course, pop your hatch. Open it up. In this case, we have the cargo shades in place, which is fine. And um, you do have the stage two spoiler here. So we're gonna go ahead and do this the right way. So now, some people just lift them off in various ways. This is the way I was taught and this way I'm gonna do it. Take off things that could scratch, maybe bump in the microphone here. Right hand here, left goes in the front, you push up, grab. Now when I grab, I start pushing to the right. This way I can free this hand. Then you come up underneath, you'll see the Metal part of the frame right here. See where my hand's at, my thumb's at? You come in closer, edge it out, up. See how I got it? And then grab. Now, I'm not holding it into my chest right now because I don't want to hit the microphone, but you get the idea. See how I'm holding this? I got two hands on it. If it's windy, you don't want the bunky in the head. So now you rotate it like this, like this, all right? Now, yes, I'm putting skin on the paint. So I, again, it's another reason for the microfiber towels, but see? I got full control over it without putting too much stress on my back. Because even though this thing's light, it's carbon fiber, only weighs about 17 pounds, you can still throw your back out. So you got to go up and in over the spoiler. There's two holes on the sides, and there's two hooks right under there. See, Jason's showing it. You go underneath your cargo shade, and you hook it here and lock it in place. And then when you're done, put it down. Now, if it's a 14 or 15, you just gentle drop it. If it's a 16 or newer, Got the small takedown, you can do that. Okay, just like we did with the C8, I'm gonna do this in a left to right fashion about the inside functions. And let's go ahead and start the car. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down. We don't need to be roaring the house out. Oh, you have it on custom mode, okay, all right. 
Well, let's skip a step here. All right, Jason, since he's in full sport mode on his exhaust, the home screen, you go here to settings, driving mode, engine sound management, so if you notice, you've got stealth to track. Obviously, track is as loud as you can be. Stealth is as quiet as you can be. I like link to drive because that whatever mode I'm in, it'll st select that appropriately. But we'll go stealth so we can actually hear me talk here while we're doing the functions here. Okay. Starting left to right. Let's start here. You see these row of buttons here? These are your memory seats. So you have... Obviously, three different options here. You have a, a one, a two, and then it looks like an exit, but you know, an icon with the door open, and that's pretty much what it is. The idea being you have one driver, a second driver, and an exit setting. The exit setting is what I always usually do first. You like to go all the way back, but then move it slightly forward. And the reason why is because there's a pressure sensor on these seats. If you got too much pressure on the backrest, or the backrest is literally pushing up against the back wall, You'll go to hit the button, it'll go, Ugh. it'll just move it and it'll stop. That's a safety, and they do that because allegedly in the C6, where you just tap this button and it would move and it wouldn't stop, somebody apparently got injured. So they stayed, did a pressure safety. Um, so you do it slightly off that, and I like to put the steering wheel all the way in and up so it's out of the way. Then you hit set, hold, you hit a two beeps, that means this is now set. So now here's your exit setting. But you now when you set these, for individual keys, you only want to have one key fob in the car, and I'll tell you why. Just like the C6, you can program this to have memory to where you start the car and it automatically goes into your driving position. Well, here's the problem. If you do that and you got both keys in the car, when it started it, which key is paired? Because unlike the C6, there is no numbers on these keys. So since they're not numbered, whichever one is paired is going to be whatever number I make it. So that means the other key. So if you, let's just say if you and your spouse or your friend or whatever have two diff, very different size seat settings, you don't want to be in a situation where you get in, you start it, and all of a sudden you're like, ah, oh, I'm getting squished. <laughs> so, so make sure there's only one key in it, and then you say, okay, this is going to be the number one key. I mean, some people write it on here, or they get the fob covers, and they put it on there, or they number them themselves, however you want to do it, um, or key tags. Yep. Um, you hit set. And hold on once you get to your driving position. You want to do this in a driving position. So, so like if this is my driving position, you set your mirrors, you set your heads-up display because your heads-up display is affected, your power tilt and telescopic is affected, and your full seat. Since the seat is full power, it's affected. Also, so are the mirrors. Um, once you get all that set, you hit set, hold, and there you go. This is now driving one. So now when you hit exit and I hold it, see it goes to my exit setting. You hold one. You say you have to hold it. Yes, in this generation you have to hold it. However, back to the settings menu. If you want to have it do it automatically upon ignition, get in here, scroll down, go to uh, vehicle, go to comfort and convenience, memory call, easy exit. Turn it on, easy exit, turn it on. So now when I shut the car off and I exit, it does it automatically. And of course, you get in, you start it. Goes to my driving position. But the biggest thing people say, oh, it gets stuck and stops randomly. So again, nine out of 10 problems I've dealt with with memory seats have to do with either improper pairing, not knowing how to use these functions, or having to seat too far back when you're on your exit setting. Because again, the pressure will cause it to freeze. Um, but generally speaking, that's how you do the memory seats. But remember, these keys are not numbered like the C6. All right, moving on to the next step. Okay, down below here, Jason, if you want to come over here really quick, you can see you've got two buttons here. You've got the hatch button, which for the rear deck lid, and then you've got this button that says off. Now you hit that, notice what does it say? It says right here, motion sensor off. And then I hit it again, motion sensor on. And people say, what's the motion sensor? So I'll tell you what the motion sensor is. So the idea behind this, be very traditional. So you take your Corvette, you go to a car show. And you decide you're going to take the top off, you roll the windows down, you leave your head up, you lock your car, and then you walk away from it. Uh, maybe you didn't leave anything in it, but you may have some sensitive items in it. But either way, the idea behind the motion control is, or the motion sensor, excuse me, is that if somebody decides they're going to rifle around your car, it'll set off the alarm. Mm -hmm. See, the old vets didn't do that. It would just be if you opened up the door. 
It's also, in the case of a break-in scenario, it's another margin of protection um, because people um, out in California, what I had a police officer tell me once is they'll use liquid nitrogen and they'll open up these the glass and then reach in and, and open the car from the inside and get in quickly. And of course, the various ways that they figure out how to steal these cars, I won't even get into. The bottom line is they get them and they steal them. Well, the idea of the motion sensor is they do that, they get your hand in here as they start moving around, the motion sensor goes off, sets off the alarm. So the only way to defeat that would be to do something underneath ahead of time, you know, to defeat, to the bypass that. But generally speaking, it's primarily for scenarios like even like this. Okay, the windows are up, you go inside to a restaurant or something, but you want the top left open. If the motion sensor's on, so somebody decides they're going to reach in and start trying to reach around the car, boom, sets off the alarm. So that's what the motion sensor is for. Um, you have the option to turn it off, or like in the case of like mine here, the showroom, if I do a demonstration, I don't want it on because if a car gets accidentally locked, now i got to reach inside the car. Now I'm setting off the alarm and letting everybody know I, left, I set off the alarm. So that's why you have the option to turn that on or off. All right, let me start this car again. All right, next up. Just like previous generations, you've got a heads-up display controls. you got the HUD button, which moves it up or down. So you move it when you're sitting here, you'll look, you'll see the heads up display and you can move it up or down to line up with the line of sight that you want. Some people that have astigmatism don't want it. They usually move it way out of the way or you can take the brightness button, which is this one and turn it all the way down till you can't see it no more. Or in this case, if it's a bright day, you turn it all the way up so you can see it. And the info button changes the way it appears. So as you can see right now, even though I'm in tour mode, Jason has his theme set here to track. If I wanted to got the track theme here but I want to have sport theme with a circular tack I can click through info and look on my heads-up display till I see that display theme I want and if which, yeah, I was gonna say, which right now if I get in here let me see if I can get it to where we can see it yep there it is see if you look closely right there see I got that in sport theme now I'm gonna go ahead and click the info button again see it's just the speedometer then you got the swoosh style just like seen below. And then you got without the speedometer, but you still get the RPM tack. And then you go to the sport circular theme. So that's what this info button does. Now I'm gonna continue to hold this here as yep. I go through this part. So we got here this display theme here. As I mentioned, this is the track display. And you say, well, what if you want it manually or you want it to change with the mode directly? you got your control switch here. Now there is a menu button. The menu button is accessed by pressing this left. So you click to the left. And you see here, you got your list of menu options. You got an info menu, a performance menu, an audio menu, phone menu, nav, and options. So in the case of display theme, I'm gonna go to options. You hit enter with this button here. So as you see, I got I could choose units, US or metric. If I'm in Canada, I'll go metric. Then you go here, see display theme, it's on track. Click to the right, and you'll see you got link to drive mode and you got track, sport, and tour. I personally like link to drive mode because whatever my mode is, is what the theme will be. And while we're on that subject, I'm gonna get out of this and go back to the main info menu. I'm gonna click the mode select, which is here, to weather mode, and you see it didn't change. Weather mode and then eco mode and then tour mode all have this theme that you're seeing right here. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna might as well address this. People always ask me, what is this eye? Is this a warning? Is this a check engine light? No, it's none of the above. This is just letting you know you're in the info menu. That is what that is. It has no other value other than that. If you had a message, it would populate right here over your display. You can't miss it. So next, I'm gonna to change to sport mode, and you see right away the theme changes. That's the sport mode theme, which of course you can see it changed in the heads-up display as well. Then you go to track mode, and there's your track mode theme. So that's your breakdown of your themes based to your modes. You can do it manually, you can customize it, you can pick it however you wanna to choose to do it. All right, moving next. Again, going back to the menus. You click to the left. And we got another one here. We got performance menu. It's pretty self-explanatory. See, now that I has been replaced with all this technical information. And if I go to sport theme, notice the center speedometer is gone and replaced just with a more classical analog for the, your tachometer. 
and then of course you get some in this case oil pressure and radio or yeah no, excuse me oil temperature right there and in this menu here in this theme you can change these gauges in that options menu I was in earlier so that is an option um, or you can go to track mode and you've got all of it see you got your oil pressure oil temperature battery and coolant temperature you also got some other features up here including uh, a shift notification here so there's all these features are available in the performance menu based on the theme you know based on what you're trying to accomplish most people like the main infotainment menu because they just want the basic stuff for daily drive whereas this menu is more for if you're racing or trying to have fun and see what your car can do like this is for lateral g's so if you're taking turns you want to see how much of this 1.25 g's scale here you can achieve you know you can practice with that you also got a 360 one and then further down this is where you got a 0 60 timer this car has a built-in so if you want to try to achieve now this is a manual so if you want to try to achieve that three second flat 0 60 you're in the co6 this is where you can practice and then of course you got more technical information more of the same kind of gauges I mentioned earlier, but on an individual level. This last one here, horsepower. This is a later C7 started adding this, so you can see how much power is actually physically going to the, the wheels. We'll go back up, and of course, tire temperature. That's important if you're on the track, you want your tires warm. Wheel slip, this is monitoring how much slip you're having, especially on launches. And we're back to the main here. Click to the left. Next menu, audio. This is self-explanatory. This is for radio. So see no media found. If I click to the right, you've got over here these different themes. Radio, media, browse, and favorites. Browse is for a device. If a device is attached, you can search through it. Like if you've got a thumb drive hooked into your USB, or you're actually fading off a uh, you know Spotify or Apple CarPlay music. We'll go to radio media. See, you can choose between AM, FM, and XM. So once you're in a menu, I'm going to go ahead and turn the volume down. And see now if I can use the up and down button as a seek. See, I can scroll down, up and down. The idea behind this is I don't have to futz with this while I'm driving. I can do it all from my thumb. Same here with the phone menu. Once the phone is paired, right now it's not connected. But if it were, I'd be able to access contacts, make phone calls through my controls here. Last but not least, we've got navigation, and all this is, if it's a car with a built-in nav, which this one has, is, let's just say, this menu, passenger is fiddling with the radio. So they're in the radio, they're playing around here. This at least gives you a quarter mile radius around your area here, so you get at least a general idea of what road you're on, just for general directions. It's just a secondary backup map area, if you will. Um, Regardless of where you're at in the menus, when you have a, a route plotted in here, you're still going to get commands here and in the heads-up display about where to turn and where you're at. Lastly, again, back to the options. Um, if I go to, say, Sport, and I scroll down, see here, pocket gauges. See, pocket gauges, as I mentioned earlier, you've got those different gauges. You can change which one of them are actually displaying. So you click here to the right, and you can edit the gauges. Hit enter, and now see, look, I can scroll up and down and pick which gauge on the left do I want. Do I want the battery voltage? Do I want the trans temp? Do I want how much horsepower is going to the wheel? Or do I want, you know, cool, coolant temperature? Let's just say I want coolant temperature. I go to there, and then I click edit gauges, and then I go over to, oh, to the right, and now I can pick a different one. See, I can go oil temperature, battery voltage, trans temperature. So let's say I just want to go trans temperature. And now those are my two side gauges. So now if I go back to the performance menu here, look at that. That's your two gauge options. So it's editable. You know, it gives you the option. And again, with track theme, you don't need to edit it because they're all there. Now, if I go to the info menu while in track theme, that's replaced with just your simple speedometer. So again, depending on the scenario, depending how you want to drive it, you can do so. I will note though, 2018 and 19 have a feature where you have um, in the performance menu everything I just showed you earlier but add the tire pressure and every gauge possible. They only did that in 18 and 19. I know it's been covered before in other videos. Unfortunately, the 17 and older did not have that feature, so I can't show it here. Um, for those of you that have those newer ones, you may notice when you go to performance menu, you got a lot more information here in the center cluster. All right, that kind of covers this portion of it. 
Um, last but not least, we'll cover a little bit of the basics of what's on the steering wheel. So um, in the case of an automatic car, it's a competition style paddle shift. So you've got your downshift, upshift, which is marked by a plus and a minus, and you can shift you know, as needed. Now, it's not ambidextrous like the C6. It's actual competition style, which people have been craving for. A lot of people didn't like the ambidextrous in the previous gen. Um, in the case of this rev match, people say, is there paddle shifting in the manual transmission? The answer is no. What they did is instead of getting rid of them, they just left them in place and instead just converted them into nothing but on off switches. So rev match is where the computer automatically puts throttle to where it needs to be if you're doing a downshift. Um, these are just simply, they turn it on or off. That's all it does. And when it's on, so if I turn it off, your gear is listed in white. If I turn it on, it's orange. That's how you know if it's on or not by the visual cue. Orange, it's on, white, it's off. All right, cruise control, GM standard. I won't go into this too much. You hit it, icons on here. When you hit speed, you set your speed. You can plus or minus one mile an hour here or cancel. And hit it again to turn it off. Favorites. So if he has favorite radio stations, which will be filled up here in this uh, bar here. So if I want to save AM 820 here, and then I go here to an FM station, and I fill this in here, and then I go to, see a Sirius XM station, and I fill this here. One, see, I got an extra dot here now. That's because I can, I can know the whole roll of favorites. I can save up to 60 favorites in this generation. I don't know who would fill that many up, but it does happen. So now... When I go to favorites and I click it, it lists all three of those favorites are now listed right here and in the heads up display as well. I don't know if you can see it right now. Probably won't be able to see it right now, but it actually lists with the station there in the heads up display. It also lists it there. So the again, the idea of just like a fighter jet, the idea of the pilot not having to get distracted by fiddling around too much stuff around a cockpit. It's all right here in quick reach, including filling with the radio, including the volume control, which is not pushed this way, it's towards you to turn up or the volume down. All right, last but not least is this right here. So this is to answer a phone call, make a phone call, hang up from a phone call, add uh, or, or excuse me initiate voice commands to the vehicle and initiate voice commands to alexa or google depending on your phone type so in a case of the vehicle you tap it once say a command or say help this gives you audio commands so i can say tune to 820 am there is no bluetooth phone connected Oops. connect a bluetooth phone right. for your oh. call to right. place a call speech session ended you Goodbye. hang up to end speech session but if you want to speed it along watch this you hit this say a command or say help scroll down to navigation what commands. type of destination and see address? i can say i want a place say of interest the name of the place of interest nearby or say change location in and out burger when it is safe to do so look to the radio display to complete your selection in and out burger see that and now I get all these options. So that's just the one, one example of using the voice commands for your features. All right. And again, if you have your phone connected, everything 16 or newer has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you would press and hold, and then you would get it. See, right now it says currently unavailable because right now the phone is disconnected. Now, in the C7, they didn't have wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, so you have to have your connector. In this case here, you got this iPhone connector. And am I okay to open this? Mm -hmm. All right. If you look right here, you've got inside the center console, you've got two USB ports and an auxiliary jack here. You can connect, but you have to connect to one of them in order to initiate the Apple CarPlay Android Auto. You have a little gap here so you're not pinching your wire to death. So we're going to put that there and close her up. Oops, sorry, Mike. Sorry, Jason. <laughs> Jason's got too much crap in here. I do. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. We all do it. All right, let me get that out of the way and close her up. Okay. All right. Back to this. Stocks are GM standard. No need to get deep into them for the wipers and for light controls. Everybody pretty much gets that. We don't need to go into that. Uh, warning hazard lights are here if you need them. Screen. What does a screen item do? Well, here, let's go back to where it's main so it looks better. That's a drop down. So you drop this down. You got a compartment here. You can store items. You also got an additional USB jack in here. You can plug in thumb drive, MP3 device a phone, 
um, or they have nothing in there. I got they also sell aftermarket little things that create like a two shelf feature. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of people usually put a concealed carry in here for all of us uh, right to carry states like us here say. in Texas. All right, main infotainment, GM's MyLink system is uh, very easy to use. You've got two different pages of applications and they all have pretty basic functions. A lot of this we've already covered here. So just the basics, obviously you got radio, phone pairing, but projection, projection, when you connect your iPhone or Android into the wired USB here, projection will initiate uh, the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto logo and you click here and then you can get into your full Android Auto Apple CarPlay features. Uh, this is of course your standard factory nav and you can play with all your settings in here, which I won't go too into, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, we covered the settings menu already a little bit. Weather is local weather if your Sirius XM is active. That's fed by Sirius XM. Performance data recorder. This is the built-in dash cam system. We've seen it many, many times. Um, you click on it. Yes, yes, gives you a little disclaimer because back when this was done, some states didn't allow dash cams, believe it or not. But yeah, so if an SD card's inserted, which right now... I took it out. SD card is not in. I'm going to have Jason show you. There's an SD card slot right here in this part of the glove box. So you're in the glove box area just to the left, you'll see a slot. If the car has it, it'll be right there. Now, the car will not have it if you do not have the built-in navigation. You have to have the built-in navigation to have the PDR. So now, of course, this is 15 or newer. Sorry, 2014, you were left out. So if you got a 14, you don't have it. All right, but PDR, you can go in here and you can start recording. You can review record sessions and you can change overlay if you want, like just a plain old camera, you want different themes for your overlay system. It's really cool. If you have this card, you never tried it, get an SD card. But one thing about the SD card for the C7, the maximum size that will fit with a C7 is 32 gigs. Once in a while, I get one in here that somehow they got a 64 gig to work, but they're usually very glitchy. It's not meant to happen. Anybody going bigger, it ain't going to work. Recently, we had another Z06 came in that had a 128 gigabyte uh, thumb dr uh, drive in there, and it did not work. All right. It's got to be 32 gigs or less. With 32 gigs, it gives you um, approximately between 730 to 780 minutes of record time. It's more than enough. Um, this, is, this one does not have the, the 1080p like the new ones do, so you got a pretty decent amount of record time with a 32 gig. All right. But they can take anything smaller as well. All right, over here again, self-explanatory text messages. So if you get text, oops, if you uh, got if while the phone was paired, get text messages. It'll list here. You click on it, and it'll audio play what the text message was. Any the idea about not looking at your phone while driving? Um, you go to the other page here. This is the big thing: curve view cameras. So if you're in a 16 or newer, and you're at least a 2LT or 2LZ or 3ZR. I have the front curve view cameras. So a lot of people say, how does this work? So this here, if you notice, this is the nose of the car. You have two fisheye cameras. And what they did was with the camera system here, they superimpose using these fisheyes to create this. It kind of gives you an overlay of the front nose of the car. So you got the nose and you got guidelines. And the idea being with these guidelines, when you're pulling up to a curb stop, especially it's a lot easier it's painted, you want to put the curb stop right before this red line. If you do that, you'll be perfect parked every time. All right. And this, in order to activate this camera system, you got an icon here, or if you're in a menu, it's up here. So like I'm in the radio menu, or I'm in a phone menu, or I'm in the nav menu, see the icon? It's right here. So you can access it there, or if it's on the main screen, you got it here. You can move it. You hold this. If you want to move icons around, see, I can move it and change pages. You know, see, I can take it, hit the arrow. I can put it here. Like I like to put it here so it's in quick access. Obviously, Jason's going to beat me up for changing all the settings. No, I want you but, to leave that one there. I okay. didn't know I could move it. All right. So there. You, oh, well, he learned something See, else, folks. All right. So that's how you do it. And when you're done, you're set, and you moved everything where you want it to be. Hit the house button, and there you go. And you can move them how, around however you want. Now, let's just say you're going in reverse. You got your backup camera, right? Your guidelines, and then you go to the drive right away. Now it's not doing it in this one because I got a manual here, but when you hit um, reverse first and then go drive, you'll get the front curb view cameras. That's normal, they do that on purpose. If you want to get out of it, just hit the home button, it goes away. So if I'm in the camera menu, just hit home, it goes back. If you exceed five miles an hour, it's gonna shut off automatically. It will not stay on faster than five miles an hour. That's an auto, that's just the way they all are. All right, 
Now with this radio system, it's got, unlike the newer ones, it's got a lot of redundancy. So you got touch screen, you've got commands here on the steering wheel, and you also have manual controls. Look, I can manually scroll on something here like navigation, hit the menu button, enter it, and now I can play with things like distance and whatnot. So there's some redundant control features here without having to constantly touch your screen. The idea behind it, if you don't want to wear out your LCD, or you know, if you've got long nails or jewelry and other things, you know, you don't want to be pressing and risk damaging your LCD screen. All right. Um, but other than that, it's pretty self-explanatory, these buttons. Seek button, back button, radio media. So like media, if his phone was paired, I'd be able to get to it. All right, down here, climate controls. Really self-explanatory. Heat of ventilated seats for driver. When you hit them, full power, medium, low, off. Same for passenger. And again, if passenger isn't looking, you just say, oh, oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry, why is your seat so hot? I don't know what happened. Oh, don't... <laughs> Let's turn that down. All right, obviously, you know, where it's blowing. Now, there is no on off button here. It's with this E7, you have to click the fan speed to the right to turn it on. Now, see, the AC compressor just came out. But see, right now, see when I did that, see how the temperatures are different? That's because they're not synced. So, whatever passenger wants to be, passenger wants to be at 66 and I want to be at 80, you can do so. And he, he or she also has control for their own heated ventilated seat option as well. So over here, if you want it, you're by yourself, you want them lined up, hit sync. And of course, whatever you are is now whatever the passenger will be. And of course, when you want to shut it all the way off, you got to click this all the way to the left and that shuts it off. So again, just a reminder, no push buttons. It's just left to right when it comes to the fan to turn the AC or heater on or off. All right, moving down here. We've got ourselves a power port. You got a power port here. I like to call that the radar detector power port. Cup holder, which has a detachable cup holder centerpiece here. So some people can take their phones and can throw them in there and um, have some more space needed if they got a larger cup. But obviously, People complain these things are a little small. There are aftermarket will add-ons that can hold bigger cups. So there's a lot of options there in the aftermarket for you. One thing this generation did that unlike previous generations, there is no more e-brakes. So it's just a physical electronic parking brake. So they activate it, pull up, you'll get a notification that says park brake set. To disengage, you hit the brake and then push down and that will disengage. See park brake released. All right, now earlier I showed the mode select Okay, you can see right now we're in track mode, but I got the, uh, I manually set it to stealth so we can hear ourselves talking here. I'm going to go ahead and put everything back here. I'm going to go driving mode, engine sound management, auto mode selector, and steering, you have the same feature. You can choose tour, sport, and track. I'm going to go auto mode selector. I'm going to default it. So, and the reason I do it that way, so when I explain it, it makes more sense of what I'm talking about. So I'm going to click this to the left. See here? Go all the way to the weakest mode, which is weather mode. See the theme changes, the exhaust is quiet, steering way show or steering responsiveness is relaxed. Now, to change these modes, you can click to the left or the right. One click, see I go one click to the right, it goes to eco. But now people say, okay, what if I go three clicks? So watch this. One, two, three. See, I, it does not bookend like the C8s. It will go all the way around. So you can circle all the way through it. So with that said. Um, I don't recommend wham, wham, wham. Just, just do it nice, short, and abrupt. One, two, and get to your mode of choice once you memorize this down. If you go and just randomly start clicking in all different directions, it, it won't be as, you'll, you'll end up in a mode you don't want to be in. All right, so like right now, if I want to go to sport, the exhaust opens up, the theme changes, the steering wheel, you feel more resistance. That's because you're getting more turn of the wheel per turn of the steering wheel. It essentially tightens up the ratio. Same thing now, if I go to track, everything I just said, even more so. See, I'm getting a lot of turns. So you're hearing all that tire squealing on our floor here, and the exhaust has got a lot of throatier note to it. Um, throttle response, and in the case of automatics, transmission responsiveness is enhanced, fitting that mode, in this case, maxed out. So that's your mode select control. I'm gonna go back to tour so we can quiet that exhaust. I've already covered the center console, so we're doing that. I'm gonna move up now. So you got obviously your vanities. If you got a two or three LT, you've got your home link system. You can pair up to three different garage doors. These things have been around, well, since C5. So they're really easy. You grab your garage door opener, you hit one of these, you time them together for 10 seconds, you'll be able to pair them. Um, 
The instructions are in every owner's manual. That's really easy. If you can't get it to pair, there may be a compatibility issue. But these are usually compatible, I would say, about 90% of the garage door openers out there. Um, here, if you have OnStar, your OnStar controls are here if you want to use OnStar. And, of course, the mirror in the 2 and the 3LT does not have a, a switch here because it adjusts to glare automatically. I know they call them, what do they call them, electronic monochrome mirrors. I forget they, the exact term of it is, but it's essentially an automated anti-glare is built into them. Um, and, of course, if you're on Star Services, if you get free trial, like you buy from us, you get a free trial, you can access SOS or direct phone calls or satellite phone if you want to use it. Um, microphone is here. So when you're talking, make your phones. If you're going here, you're getting further away from the mic. It is here. That's for both OnStar and your Bluetooth. Um, and that's really about it. I think we were pretty thorough. I know I covered quite a bit. I hope I didn't bore anybody here, Only but I mean, we really... Just, which you sh we showed, but here's oh, your... Oh, you know what? Box. I know what we can cover. Let's cover valet mode. Okay. Okay, so valet mode. People say, is, is valet mode useful? Yes, it is, and I'll show you why. So let's just say... You got a gun in here, and you got personal paperwork or even a wallet in here because you're out and about doing something that you don't want it on you. All right? So how can you secure it from somebody potentially stealing it easily? You go here to your settings menu. Valet mode. Click on it. And you this gives you here. Now, there is no built-in code. You make the code. I can make it whatever I want, but it's four digits. So I'm going to enter just a generic 1111. Hit enter. And then you do it again. All right, now I'm going to turn up the radio for just a second. I hit lock. Shuts off the radio. The button's here. See, it's all locked out. Nothing's functional. Nothing's responsive. I cannot open this. I cannot open the glove box. It's all secured until you get back in and enter that code. Also, the performance data recorder for the cars that have it, you can program it to do it automatically in valet mode record. It won't record audio because that's illegal without permission, but it will record the video feed. So that way, and this is where you have some of those infamous videos of technicians taking the cars out and hitting 150 on the highway, or of course, actual valets doing donuts in Los Angeles parking garages. Yeah, that's how they got these people, okay? Um, and they catch them on camera. Okay, so you shut the car off, you go away from it, you come back in, you get in the car, it's still in valet mode. How do you get it off valet mode? Well, you get in, the car's running, tap the screen, it'll ask for your code. So you hit your code. 1111 is my code. I hit unlock. It opens up, glove box is back, and the radio's back on, which I'm going to turn down here so we don't get a copyright strike. All right, we'll get that back open. So that's how you use valet mode. Highly recommend it um, in scenarios that it's applicable. One thing, though, it does not secure the center console. Okay, older vets like the C6 had a locking mechanism, like a keyhole here. You can lock them, and the C8s you can lock out. The C7s you cannot. This is an unsecured compartment. So if you got sensitive items or weapons, I do not recommend leaving it in here when you're leaving the car. Um, if you want less chance of somebody breaking in doing a smash and grab. Right. All right. Well, I think we've done a very thorough interior. I'm not saying I got everything. I know we cover quite a bit here. But um, for those of you that have never had a C7 before, or you have a C7 and maybe I covered something that you weren't familiar with, you now have it. Yeah. Um, generally speaking, I mean, there's always more and more you can cover. And I tell everybody the same thing, you need to make this your homework. I always say this to my customers, they buy a car, read these books. You got quick guides, you got the main owner's book. And what's great now is ever since 2014, Every single owner's book is online. You can go through them manually. If you don't have the book, you bought a used car and you didn't get the owner's books, you can go online and scroll through it manually if you're really stumped on something. That it's I like. all here. So. All right. All right. Well, I hope you folks got a lot out of that. I know for some of you it may have been boring as hell because it's a lot of tediousness with it, but you'd be surprised. I have sold well over 1500 of these things and i can tell you right now i've had people that have never been explained half of what i've just gone through in this video now we didn't go too thorough in other things like how to use jacking pucks how to work or you know how to deal with spare tires flat tires we're not going to get into that stuff we're talking just basic operator functionality and at the end of the day I could sit in a car with you and explain this 30 times in a row and you may only retain 10 to 20 percent of what i say muscle memory i.e. you do it yourself and you learn your hat you become habitual with your car will is the best way to develop it 
you know, I learned a quite, a, or I remembered a quite a bit um, in this video, which I'm still gonna have to go back and rewatch to remember how to do it. Because even though you showed me, I was like, yes, and I've been wanting to know how to do that. Or I didn't even know I could do that. Yeah. But I won't remember by the time I get back in my car, yeah. so that's why the video and, there, and there's even more to cover. Like I didn't like we didn't plug in an iPhone and go through Apple CarPlay and all that. There was, that is a whole video in itself. Yeah. Um, but fortunately for everybody, there's plenty of other tutorials online. Yeah. Well, I wanted to get with Jason here was just yeah. a basic, just like we did with his C8 video, a basic rundown of how to do a C7. Yeah. There's some variations, as I mentioned, like 2014 doesn't have some of the features. 2019 and 18s have some different add-ons that they changed. You know, but this Jason's car here being a 17, it's right in the middle of the pack, gives you the majority of what all those cars have. So I hope this video benefited you. And if you're if you're first time C7 buyer, you can use this as a training guide where you're sitting in the car, pop it up on the phone stand and go through it and practice yourself and learn your car. The, you, there's a lot, a lot of technology to these cars. And but, you know, some if you're not really a techie person, the only way you're going to get good at it is to practice with it. And I want to tell you thank you because again, I enjoy these kind of videos because it also teaches me things. And so I, your knowledge is just a whole, like, just going through watching you remember all this stuff. I, you do an amazing job. So well, I really appreciate that. And I, so. hope, uh, I hope the rest of you got, got something out of it. If you did it, if you didn't, or you felt uh, things could have been better, feel free to leave that in the yeah. comments below. And again, thank you once again, yeah. Jason, appreciate once again it. for filming out here. Yeah. And uh, be sure to check out all his other videos. Um, also, I don't know when we're going to be posting this, um, but uh, every second Saturday of every month, yes. we have Corvettes and Coffee here at Corvette World. Right Our there. next one is, as of right now, today's Thursday, yep. two days. It'll be out here from 9 to 11. Come on out. I think you also have some events coming up here in uh, Bedford. You yep. got another get-together. The one over here at Harley last week was amazing. Yeah. And uh, hopefully one of these I'll be able to get out to them when I'm not working. We're going to start having some evening ones so that guys <laughs> like yourself can make it out. Yes, yeah, yeah. so those of us work. No, no, no breaks for us car salesmen. I know. But uh, thank you, everybody. really appreciate it. Jason? Yep, that's going to do it. Hey, listen, everybody, thanks for watching. Please hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.